Hey guys, what's going on? It's Darcy Knockout and I'm back with another video. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nolan and I'm super excited for today's video because I, I have an unboxing for you guys. So, this is the first RC I've bought in probably close to two years, so I'm super excited about this. As you can tell from the title of the video, I bought the Creighton Extreme Bash Roller. I'm going to grab the camera, we're going to take a closer look, I'm going to show you the electronics and the setup that I'm going to be running in it. Gosh, guys, I'm super excited. I haven't unboxed an RC in, like I said, nearly two years, so I'm going to break the seal on it and we're going to dig right into this. All right, guys, before I actually remove this RC from the box, we're going to take a quick look at the packaging. I really like the way it's packaged. This is actually the actual size of the RC, as you can see right here. So actual size, 1A scale. So it says right there, EXP Extreme Bash, Creighton Full Option Roller, 1A scale, four-wheel drive, Extreme Bash, electronic speed monster truck. So that's pretty cool. Um, says Extreme Bash Proof, so we will see. It does have 7075 aluminum shock towers, front and rear, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, also, the other major selling uh, factor for me was that it has a 7075 aluminum chassis. Um, because, you know, I'm not a biggest fan of bashing RCs that have like an aluminum chassis because I just feel like they're going to bend. But considering this one's taking it up a notch and it has a 7075 aluminum chassis, that should make it way stronger, even though I believe it's only a three millimeter. And uh, it's kind of cool that it's etched to perfection, but uh, that's going to get scraped off super fast. So um, I know they've done some things like there's a sleeve thing. I don't know if that's a sleeve, but they have something, a uh, little plastic piece that goes up over the, um, it looks like over the differential cup heading to the rear diff. I think that's just so the grub screw won't come out, I assume, or so it keeps the collar on. I know that the differentials are beefed up somewhat from the ready to run. Uh, it has, uh, I assume these are 7075 braces as well. Uh, chassis braces. Uh, the arms I know have been modified. They've been beefed up. I like the look of the matte black, uh, matte and gloss black um, body. Also, I am a little concerned about this because the bumper doesn't look super sturdy to me, but they claim it's bass proof and I haven't seen anybody break it yet. But we're going to see because um, I might still want to put a T-bone racing front bumper on this. So we're going to have to see how this holds up when I actually start bashing it. So included is a Creighton Extreme Bash Roller needed to complete. You need a transmitter and receiver, steering servo, electronic speed control, motor, and batteries. One or two batteries, LiPo. Um, so yeah, and I'm going to be showing you guys, once I unbox this, I'm going to be showing you guys the setup of what I'm actually going to be running for my electronic setup. Vehicle specifications, it's 23.78 inches in length, 8.27 inches tall so it doesn't feel that heavy when I picked up the box you know it's a roller but I picked up the box it only weighs 9.62 pounds so not on not that heavy but then you add the electronics and the batteries and we're probably talking more like 13 pounds 12 pounds I don't know but um, yeah design fast design tough Arma if you guys have been watching my channel for a while you'll know that I have had an Arma before this is not my first Arma vehicle um, I had an Arma Nero back in the day. So like two, two and a half years ago, I had an Arma Nero uh, 6S. And the thing I liked about that is that actually, a lot of the Arma stuff has um, metal chassis, which like I said, for bashing, I'm actually not that big of a fan of. Um, but the Nero did not. The Nero, the Nero had like a composite nylon chassis, like a nylon plastic reinforced chassis. And it had two battery compartments, one on each side. But the reason I got rid of that RC, and the only reason I got rid of that RC, is because unfortunately, um, Arma discontinued it. Because I guess there was some law dispute between them and Traxxas on their design. I don't know if it's their shock design being a copy of the E Revo. So they unfortunately got sued. And once they decided to discontinue it, I'm like, nope, the parts are going to get difficult to find. So I made the right call and I decided to. Um, get rid of that one and like I said that was the right call but since then I've been wanting to get another Arma because I know Arma is like one of those companies out there that I've wanted to get an RC from them for a while since I got rid of the Nero but I wasn't sure which one um, over the past year or so I've been saving up for a different Arma RC 
Um, it wasn't actually this one, but when they dropped the Arma video on this, the trailer video on this, I changed my mind completely. I'm like, nah, -uh, I gotta get this one. So, completely changed my plan. I decided, nope, I'm gonna get the Arma Extreme Bash. Because I think 1A scale is a perfect size for a basher as well. I know they have the 1 uh, one-fifth scale Creighton, but um, watching videos of that, I'm not actually all that impressed by it. Like, it can't even pop wheelies from a stop. Like, I think you have to put earplugs in the diff the center diff in order for it to even pop wheelies. And then I did see a trailer, They're, they are coming out with a 8S uh, Outcast, but you know, I already have three X Maxes. I don't feel like I need something that's that size. Um, the X Max is already proven to be a super tough RC, probably the ultimate monster truck. So I feel like I don't really need to get another electric monster truck or stunt truck of that size. So that's why I got this. And also this is more reasonably priced. I want to say the new uh, Extreme Bash um, or the 8S Outcast is going to be roughly, I think, eight or $900. So not cheap. This was $470. And then add, add on top about $250 worth of electronics. So I'm in at about, what's that put? About $700. Bucks. The thing that appealed to me about this being a roller is back when I had my Nero, they were still using, Arma was still using the, the Tactic uh, transmitters, which I actually liked. Um, I don't know if they still use them, but I know for the ready-to-run Creighton, they aren't using that anymore. For the ready-to-run Creighton, they're using Spectrum stuff, and it's like a cheap one. I think with like, I think it just has a cheap plastic wheel, steering wheel. So I'm like, uh, uh. And I know from experience from Spectrum, Spectrum doesn't have the best range. So you're gonna see from what I have, it, it's gonna be hooked up to that I care about range. So that's another reason why I didn't want to get the ready to run one because it doesn't even have the tactic stuff, which I thought was better. So why they did away from the tactic stuff, I have no idea. They went to Spectrum, so I didn't really want to, I didn't want to do that. Um, so when they came out with the roller, I'm like, oh yeah, that would be awesome. Another reason is because then I could pick an ESC that actually has my preferred connectors because I hate soldering. I'm not very good at it. Most of the time when I do solder stuff up, it looks super sloppy. So I bought an ESC actually that already has the connectors soldered on and I will show that to you once we get this thing unboxed. All right guys, and on this last side right here, it kind of looks like stuff I've already kind of shown you. It has a 7075 aluminum front and rear shock towers, um, 7075 aluminum chassis, multi-spoke wheels and multi-terrain D-boot copperhead two tires. Uh, EXB large volume waterproof receiver box, has the aluminum servo mount, has heavy duty steel turnbuckles, heavy duty upper steel hinge pins, uh, EXB plated limited slip differential. So it should be able to pop wheelies pretty well. I assume that's the center or that might be all of them. I think this has a center diff. Yeah, this should have a center diff. Uh, durable steel drive shafts throughout, heavy duty heavy duty drivetrain, oil filled adjustable shocks, all metal out drives and gearbox internals, strong composite chassis side pods, and a high downforce wing. That's another thing I'm a little worried about, you know, how flexible and how strong is the wing gonna be? Cause you know, that's one of those things that is always gonna be super prone to cracking and breaking pretty early on. So I think we're gonna get the top off of this box and I'm gonna actually pull the roller out. All right, guys, now that I have the top off, taking a look at this RC, super nice looking, matte black with gloss. Yeah, matte black, it looks almost like a gray, like a matte gray with black gloss, but they say uh, black on black, I think. Let's see, pretty, yeah, that wing is pretty flexible, it seems like, so we're gonna have to see how that holds up. Wing, package real nice. Let's see, I will pull this out, see what it has. It looks like it has a bit of a tool kit. Um, some sort of wheel wrench. Uh, looks like we have pistons uh, with different holes for your uh, shock pistons. High speed gearings in there as well. Looks like there's some decals, some stickers, and an owner's manual or instruction manual. So let's see about if I can actually get this out one handed. Okay, it's all gonna come out all in one, so. Let me move this. I need to move this over here out of the way. So let's see if I can get this out one-handed. Okay. All right, guys, trying to see the size of this pinion. 
I don't know if this is the only pinion that comes with it. Here, right here, there's uh, some Allen keys, wheel nut wrench. There's those little pistons for your shocks. I only see, I only see one gear in here, so high speed gearing. So I assume that's the only gear that comes with it. Cause uh, I don't think there's any other gears in here. So that must be the only pinion that comes with it. Interesting, I figured it would come with two. I figured it would come with a low speed one and a high speed, but I do not see a low speed one anywhere let me get my electronics out and i'm going to show you exactly what i'm going to be running all right guys so i'm going to be running this futaba uh, receiver and it's a looks like it's a four channel or five channel receiver um, i'm going to hook it up to my futaba t4 pv transmitter and hopefully we'll get really good range out of that now for my esc um I did not want to buy the stock. Like, I wanted to buy close to stock electronics. So, here, let me show the motor first. I got the stock motor that would come in a Arma Creighton ready to run. So, I believe this is a 2050 kV. Yep, it says right on it. 2050 kV Arma BLX four pole brushless motor. So, this is what would come in a ready to run. I decided just to go with a stock setup there. So, stock size can motor. But for the ESC, I did not want to use the plugs that. Um, that they have. I don't know if they're EC5s or what they are, but I did not want to use those type of plugs. And as I said earlier in my video, I'm not a big fan of soldering. And actually I have quite a few batteries that are T plugs or Dean's plugs. So I found this one online, which is a Hobby Wing product. It is a Hobby Wing 150 amp ESC, waterproof ESC. This is actually a Hobby Wing product that was made for Red Cat. So Red Cat Racing, which must be another, um, I assume it's another Tower Hobbies brand or another Horizon Hobby brand, but so it's for Red Cat. I, I want to say it's called the Kaiju. I could be pronouncing that wrong, but it's for, for their 6S um, monster truck. So, and the reason I got this was because it has the same amount of amperage basically as the one that, um, that the Creightons have. And I actually, I only got this for a hundred bucks and the Creighton ones were like 150 plus. So, um, and I could run a single battery because it has this loop right here to, I guess, connect the circuit. So you can just run one 6S pack, but I don't have any 6S packs. So I'm going to be running two 3S packs. Um, nice little on off switch. And the good thing is it has the exact same size four millimeter bullet connectors, which will line up perfectly with the bullet connectors on the motor so that's another reason so I don't have to solder any connectors on don't have to solder any bullet connectors on this is basically a you know bolt-in plug-and-play thing so now for the um, for the servo that I'm gonna be running now I'm not 100% sure about this because I have this 20 kilogram digital servo right here it's a Metal Gear servo but I don't see anywhere on it that says that it's actually waterproof so I don't know if I'm actually gonna use this one nor do I know if it's going to fit with this. Let's see real quick if the splines are even going to line up. I can't tell. It's sliding on there, but I don't know if it's the right size spline. So I'm either going to be using this 20 kilogram one. Otherwise, back when I had my Nero, I bought another one of these, which is an Arma, Arma Durango. I just learned that in a video that one of the people posted was that Arma was actually a, a branch off of Durango, which I know is uh, like racing buggies. So that's pretty cool but I have heard that these ones that were in the Nero and I put they put these in a lot of them are pretty weak I mean it's only a 15 kilogram compared to this one being well this is only a 20 kilogram but this is only 15 kilogram at least it is metal gear and it claims to be waterproof so um, well since this one's an armor one I assume this will fit with the splines on this servo horn um, so we're gonna see I'm either gonna use this one and see how this one holds up whether or not it's gonna burn up or I'm going to use that one. So that's going to be the two options. I thought about going with the Savox one, but I'm like, I kind of look at servos at this point as being disposable because I go through them left and right. Even if you get your endpoints right and everything, you drive them through water, you bash them enough, they still break. They give out on you. Next thing you know, they're broken. So I kind of, I kind of buy like these cheap 20, 25 kilogram ones on eBay. And I kind of just, you know, they last a decent amount of time. I don't know if they're waterproof, but uh, this is what I put in a lot of my rigs. Because you can get these for like 20, 25 bucks per. And also this comes with uh, 
This also came with a servo horn. So I guess if that servo horn doesn't work, I might be able to run this one. I mean, this is longer. I don't know, but we will see. So yeah, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you do that. And also like this video if you enjoyed this and you thought you gained something from it. Tell me what you guys think of my setup. I mean, it's going to be a pretty relatively um, stock setup. Um, like I said, 150 amp Hobbywing ESC with the stock 2050 kV brushless motor. Possibly just a stock Arma 15 kilogram servo. Um, if not, 20 kilogram. And then I have it hooked up, obviously, I'm going to hook it up with my Futaba receiver and transmitter. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in another video. Later.